On today's episode of the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, I'll be talking about a very serious subject, using humor in coaching. You are listening to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, a show devoted to uncovering the systems and the secrets that set the best apart, where you learn how to take your coaching clients to the next level, while you grow the coaching practice of your dreams. So sit back and relax, or sit up and get excited. Either way, you might want to pay attention. This could be important. Hey there, welcome back to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. Today I'm recording out on my back deck, uh, covered over, thank goodness, because it's raining outside. And, uh, (laughs) you know, it's one of those things, you just got to have a sense of humor about things, you know, it's like it's it's not appropriate for me to be in the house recording today because my wife is in a lot of meetings, it's a small house, and she's got to be in certain areas, so I've got to, you know, find a place that's quiet enough to record, and yet it's raining outside, so it's not ideal recording conditions, I think that's safe to say, but you might remember uh, a few weeks ago or a few podcasts ago, maybe it was a few minutes ago, I don't know when you listen to these things, um, or you may not remember at all. Maybe this is your first time here. Nevertheless, I recorded uh, on a very hot day, and I had some fans going, I think, and uh, the windows were open. So I don't know if some lawnmowers were happening outside or something. Nevertheless, we do what we can, can't we? And we roll with the punches, and we have a sense of humor about things. And in fact, that's what I'm going to talk to you about today, is having a sense of humor about things. Sort of. I'm actually going to be talking about using humor in coaching. Use of humor in coaching. It has a a history for it, and I I think it's a really great thing. I tend to use it myself, but I've also learned from experience that it can backfire. You have to be careful with it. So we're going to be talking about it today. I was tempted to just tell you a lot of jokes, but I'm not going to do that. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I'm very tempted. I have a few on the tip of my tongue, um, but but I, okay, I'll tell you one. So um, this person walks into a doctor's office. They've got a carrot up their nose and a banana in their ear, and they say, "Doc, what's wrong with me?" He says, "Oh, it's very simple. You're you're not eating properly." Um, it's it's not a great joke, but it it, it is a joke. And okay, so why 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 does one even consider? using humor in coaching. Humor has a lot of uses. It can lighten the mood. It can break tension. But for my money, it does something a lot more than that. I have known a lot of great therapists who uh, use, use humor extensively, and they use it for good purpose, to interrupt patterns, to, um, you know, to poke fun not at the person but at the problem so you and I are sitting here together laughing at the problem and if we can do that if I can get you to laugh at the problem then you have power over it you have power over it and you can change it much more effectively if you can laugh at it so you and I together are laughing at something else so it creates rapport between the client and the coach and it helps you to have power over the problem. Um, I had a, a therapist once who had a very, very great distinction about certain things. He said, um, you know, it's not whether or not you have a challenge or a problem, a neurosis, a psychosis. What, what the problem is whether you have it or it has you. Whether you have it or it has you. And there's a big difference, although it might be somewhat subtle. There's a big difference between those two, isn't there? So having the ability to laugh at the problem gives you that power, I think. I think it's a very, very useful thing to work towards. Um, I will tell you that, you know, like I said, throughout the therapeutic uh, time, ever since Freud, humor has had its place. Um, Some therapists perhaps more than others. Freud, I believe, thought it revealed things from the unconscious that uh, he could then explore. 
That's, that can be useful. Um, Albert Ellis, I think quite famously, if you don't know, he is rational and motive behavior therapy, um, loved using humor. Is very famous for his kind of body humor, which, by the way, um, humor also can be, well, that's another thing you got to be careful of, isn't it? It can be appropriate in some circumstances and others and, and things that were acceptable perhaps 20 years ago, Albert Ellis, you know, 30 years ago, um, may not be appropriate today. May, may wouldn't be used and you got to be careful, don't you? Um, but Al- Albert Ellis would have these things. I think he was called them hu- rational humorous songs, um, songs that they would sing. So I remember re- hearing about one situation where he actually led a group of recovering alcoholics um, in a song that he entitled, I think, Drinking is the Thing for Me. Um, sung to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. So, so c- come on, everybody. Drinking is the thing for me. You know, they all sing it together. <laughs> and it's, you know, of course, it's funny. So the people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're having fun about it. Whereas it's like this massive problem for a lot of people. But now it's not just a massive problem. It's a massive problem I can make fun of. So I have a little bit of power over it. Another famous therapist who used a lot of humor was Frank Fairley. Frank Fairley, I don't know if you know his work or not. Nick Kemp has been a guest on this podcast. Nick has sort of taken up the mantle and uh, followed in the footsteps of a, a bit of Frank Fairley. Other people have too used what he called provocative therapy. Um, on my website, essentialcoachingskills.com, there is a... Uh, a set of videos of Frank Fairley available if you wanted to. I think they're available for purchase somewhere. Anyway, um, we had Frank into New York City in 2010, I think it was, to do a, a seminar wherein he did basically six or eight therapeutic sessions, talked a bit as well. But in every session and in his talks as well, there's just tons of humor tons of humor. He is laughing with the client. See, that's the thing. He never pokes fun at the client. They never feel like they're being made fun of. In fact, as much as there is humor from the get-go, from the word go, from the time they start to the time they finish, there's humor in these sessions. It always feels like they're laughing together. You know, there's a great sense of rapport between Frank and the clients. But it's, it's quite remarkable. Sometimes the sessions are, are rather unintelligible. You don't know what's going on, except they're all both laughing uproariously throughout the whole thing. And the person after sessions over will say, like, I don't know what was going on. I felt like I was in trance the whole time. But something shifts in them, and, and, and the therapeutic change takes place. It is quite remarkable to behold. Um, so Frank Fairley, provocative therapy, Nick Kemp, he calls it provocative change works now. He's added some other elements into it. I think kind of from the world of NLP or other things like that, worth looking into as well. And you're going to find lots of different examples of therapists and coaches and NLP practitioners. Richard Bandler is hilarious. Tony Robbins has his moments of great hilarity. I remember laughing hysterically at a lot of Tony Robbins jokes back in the day. Um, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. And it can be really very useful, particularly if it is your bent. I've been listening to uh, some humorous people talking recently. I was watching a, a set of videos Oh, gosh, I'm not sure if it was Hulu or Netflix where I saw these things. Um, I'm not sure. I can't tell you. But it was called Pretend It's a City. Pretend It's a City is uh, uh, follows the humorist Fran Leibowitz around and interviews her. It's, it's directed and also kind of stars uh, Martin Scorsese, um, directed by, and he's in there interviewing her. It's mostly her speaking. But I remember at one point, um, they show a clip from when she's giving a talk, I think at Symphony Space in Manhattan, somewhere like that. And somebody asks, you know, how do you learn to be funny? How do you learn humor? And she said, yeah, you can't. You, you can't. It's like, it's like asking, how do I learn to be tall? 
you know, you, you are or you aren't in, in her estimation. And I was also listening to a, a book, an audio, um, audio book um, from a, a fellow teaching about storytelling. And he's basically sort of this, said kind of the same thing. You know, humor is great if you got it and um, work towards it if you, if you want. And um, don't worry about it if you don't. You know, if, you, if it's not natural to you, it cannot sometimes be that easy to uh, to change and apply it. Um, and that's OK. You don't need to have it. If you do, it's great. If you can develop it, it's great. And um, here's some other reasons why I think that humor does build relationships. It does help build rapport. You know, if you, you know have some shared humorous things that you can both laugh about some experiences that have happened that you both find funny and you, you laugh. It, it builds that relationship, it builds a rapport, which I think is essential. I'm sure you agree. It's essential in a coaching relationship. You and your client are working towards this together. I think in the very first podcast I ever did um, with coach Dave Buck, who was wasn't enough, nice enough to be on this thing as the, as the first person on here. Um, he came on and said, yeah, it's, it's, it, you're coaching. It's, you're playing together. It's like playing a game. When you're coaching, it's about, you know, we're playing together. We're doing this together. It's about a relationship. You know, we're inventing, we're reinventing together. So humor helps you to do that. Humor helps you to have that special kind of relationship. And like I've said about Frank Fairley, you want to be careful. Nobody wants to feel like you're making fun of them. Nobody wants to make you make them feel like you're making fun of them. You, you can't do that. You make fun of it, the relationship. You make, No, not the relationship. You make fun of the problem. You make fun of the circumstance, whatever. But you and your client have always a sacrosanct kind of relationship that humor helps you to build. It requires on your part, the ability to read people, right? You've got to be able to read people, see if they're open to it, responsive to it, et cetera, and read them well, read them well. I, I will admit I've gotten into trouble a couple of times, not very often because I'm pretty good at it, but I've gotten in trouble a couple of times with, you know, not reading people correctly. And they thought I was implying something that the type of jokes that I was telling, et cetera. So um, it required some damage control and apologies and explaining, et cetera. Uh, I was able to fix it for the most part, but um, it is something you want to be careful of. And it's a lesson hard learned that I am imparting to you. So be be cautious. And, and of course, these days, I would say um, you've got to perhaps be even more cautious than in the past. I think perhaps people have gotten you know, more sensitive towards certain uh, types of humor, right? So the jokes that were appropriate once are not appropriate anymore. So be very careful with that. Interestingly, I think humor also helps deeper issues emerge. I think when you can, you know, use humor effectively, it allows deeper issues to emerge. It's kind of similar to when you watch a very moving movie. Um, there's often humor in it. Humor allows people to get into that place of very deep feelings a lot. And you can sometimes say things in a humorous movie, you say things in a humorous story that you couldn't necessarily say at least as well in a, less humorous story and a serious type of story. So it, it actually helps you to get into a place where you're, you reveal even deeper. As I mentioned before, Freud often thought that there was information to be gleaned from what a person thought was humorous and that when those things were revealed, they were revealing something from the deeper unconscious. There's also those things you probably remember you probably have heard of called Freudian slips, Freudian slips. I remember one episode of Cheers. I don't know if you remember the TV show Cheers, but um, the postman, Cliff, I think his name was, um, was asked, what is a Freudian slip? And he says, oh, that's when you say one thing, but you mean your mother. Um, it was funny. 
funny little moment, little uh, Freudian slip of Cliff's explaining a Freudian slip. And it revealed something about Cliff because he lived with his mother. It was very, very, it's a great joke, actually, for for cheers. And, um, yeah, so sometimes they can actually do that. And if a client of yours does that and you catch it, it can be really great. It's like, oh, really? What do you mean by that? And it can be a little moment, just like Freud would do, of revelation. And then you can refer back to it from time to time in a lighthearted, jokey manner, but it can help that conversation keep going, you know? And it's a really cool thing to do. So you want to be able to be attentive to your client, read to them well, and listen to be able to use those surprising insights. That's what humor often is. It's surprising. You know, it's it's a twist on things. It's an unexpected little um, twist on things, and it offers new insights. Also notice, however, that sometimes if the client has had a history, perhaps, of using humor to cope or to uh, obfuscate, to you know, use like kind of smoke and mirrors things to avoid situations, that sometimes they can be very skillful at this. Sometimes people can be very skillful at using humor to avoid talking about the things that they really need to be talking about. So listen for that as well. Some things also want to be cautious about in using humor in in therapy or coaching is uh, sarcasm. Be careful with sarcasm. You can use it. Yes, you know, be careful. Because it, it tips over into that thing where you're, who are you making fun of? What are you making fun of? You got to be very careful with this. And also on gallows humor, you want to be careful with that. It can be, again, really great because you might be, you know, starting to find some humor in these dark times and dark situations that, um, you know, have been plaguing the coach, plaguing your client. So it can be very useful. You just want to be careful. All right. My, my belief is that coaching is enhanced with humor. It doesn't make you less professional. In fact, I think it opens up in new possibilities to make your coaching more valuable. So don't avoid the chance to learn appropriate humor. So that's just about all I have to say to you today about humor. Um, just so you know, as I'm Standing here recording this, there's a massive daddy long leg spider making his way across the screen of this screen and porch upon which I stand in the rain. Recording the rain is lightened up, so it's not too noisy out there. I don't know if you can hear the crickets out here. It's a damp, soggy summer day here in the Hudson Valley. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Whatever time of day, whatever season it might be, as you listen to this. Thank you for tuning in. Please tune in again to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. You find all our stuff over there at the EssentialCoachingSkills.com. There's uh, transcripts of all the recordings we've done. And by the way, they are interactive. So if you go to one of those recordings, you can, uh, transcripts of the recordings, you can click on the recording and it'll take you to the place in the recording that it's, uh, been said live you can then you know you'll hear it it's pretty pretty cool enjoy thank you bye well that does it for another episode of the essential coaching skills podcast thanks so much for being here hope you enjoyed this episode i certainly enjoyed having you here hey if you want more information about sleight of mouth you can find it at essentialcoachingskills.com or you might even check out sleightofmouth.org that's a nice website too Thanks. Stay safe. Stay curious.